I'm like really hoping you can't hear my boyfriend's band playing downstairs. If you can, I'm sorry. <laughs> hey guys, today I'm going to be talking about all the books that I read in January. I actually did pretty good this month, I think. I read seven books, so I don't think that's so bad. I'm pretty proud. Let's get right into it. So the first book I read this month was Crying in H Mart by Michelle Zahner, also known as Japanese Breakfast, if you know her music. If you don't, I recommend checking it out. This is her memoir, though. In it, she talks about the death of her mother and the trauma and the grief and everything that she went through. This book is so heartbreaking. I cried almost every time I picked it up. Like, I would pick it up, I would cry, and then I'd make myself take a break, and then I'd pick it up again, and then I'd cry, and then I'd take a break. Like, that was my whole process of reading this. But also at the same time, it was written so well and I couldn't put it down. She also explores her Korean-American identity in this novel because her mother was Korean, her dad was American. So with the loss of her mother, she also lost like part of her connection to her culture, which was also really fascinating to read about. I just can't recommend this highly enough. It's so heartbreaking, but it's so good and it's so worth the read. This is like the first book I read this year, right? Definitely in the top 10. I mean, there's- I can't even picture myself liking another book more than this this year, so honestly, this is gonna be the best book that I read this year. I'm positive of it. Then I picked up In the Shadow of Man by Jane Goodall. So this is Jane Goodall's memoir. If you can see, I was kind of in a memoir kick to start off the year. I ended up giving this book three stars. So in this novel, it follows like the beginning of Jane Goodall's research on chimpanzees. Which is interesting, like, you follow her as a woman who had no fucking training in the field. All the training she had was, like, her love of animals, and this dude just sent her to study chimpanzees in Africa for the first time ever. Like, no one had ever studied chimpanzees in the wild before Jane Goodall. He wanted people to see it with a fresh eye and not be held up with all, like, the theory and the particular ways that, like, schools teach people to do things. So that factor is really interesting. And you follow like the first group of chimpanzees that she was with and she assigns them all names and talks about their personalities. And it definitely was interesting. Here's the thing though, like I went into this kind of wanting to learn more about, like I'm really interested specifically in the behavior of animals and primates. So I was hoping to learn more about like the science behind what she had done. But as her memoir, this kind of just reads like someone who went on vacation and like had a really good time on vacation and wants to tell you all about what they did. And I don't say that to minimize what she did because obviously Jane Goodall is so fucking cool. But like she just brushes over all of her scientific achievements. For instance, like I know that what she became famous for was she observed the chimpanzee's tool making and at the time that was like the only distinction between animals and human. Like, humans make tools and that's kind of how we defined ourselves. So her finding evidence that chimpanzees were capable of making tools kind of blew everyone's minds and it's the reason she's so famous today is that important discovery. But she just kind of like glosses over it. She might have like a word or two in there about it, but overall she kind of just focuses more on like the chimpanzees as like people almost and like what they were doing, what their group was doing and what her daily life was like, which is still interesting. It's just not what I wanted from this. She does have a chapter at the end where she talks about like chimpanzees compared to humans and the common traits that we have and the common differences, which I thought was my favorite part of the book. Also though, like this book is very outdated. She wrote it in the 60s and some of the language is just kind of like icky. Um, which is such like a three-year-old thing to say, that word, but for instance, like she's in Africa and she's living amongst like local people there, but instead of ever saying like local people or anything like that, she's always like the Africans. And it, the way that she does it, it's just very otherizing and it kind of left me with a bad feeling about it. Again, I know this was written in the 60s, but also this is a newer edition, so maybe it should be updated. And I wanted to throw that out there for anyone else who might read it. If that's something you're uncomfortable with, then maybe skip. 
overall, like I said, I did like it, even though it's not what I was looking for. I gave it three stars. Then I picked up The Prince of Mist by Carlos Ruiz Zafon. I'm not going to talk about this book because I actually have a video where I talk about this book in depth. So all I'm going to say is that I gave it four stars. I didn't realize right until now that the sun's coming at me like this. Hold up. I did not fix the problem at all. This is as good as it's going to get. Next book I picked up is All About Love by Bell Hooks. Now I've been in the middle of this book for months. <laughs> I think I first picked it up in like August or September and then I never finished it and it was kind of just sitting on my shelf. So this month I decided to finish this book. And honestly, like the title is the best description. This book is all about love. Like in this novel, Bell Hooks shares her every single thought on like every single type of love. <laughs> it is really interesting. Um, I think though that the depth of the information she's covering is kind of a negative of the book though. Like it kind of took away from it in some aspects. She was covering so much ground that it was so hard um, for me to make sure that I was getting everything that she was saying. For instance, like with my nonfiction, I tend to take notes um, and I have been working on like writing my notes for this and they're just so all over the place Be and it's because she's encompassing so much in the novel. That being said, I did still enjoy it though. I think that it definitely got better towards the end. Um, in particular, I really liked her chapter on romantic relationships and I ended up giving this three stars. I'm excited to read more about Hooks and I think that once I pick a different book of hers to read that's more focused on one singular thing that I'll enjoy a lot more. After that, I picked up a book that ended up surprising me a lot and that is Beware of the Night by Jessica Fleck. I picked this up because I just wanted something that I could really get into really fast. And for me, that's usually YA because they're just so easy. It's really great escapism, honestly. So this is a YA dystopian novel. It's hard to describe. Um, basically, in the the world that it takes place in was destroyed by like a great flood, and there's just this one country left called Bologna. Bologna, I don't know how I'm supposed to say it. And in this country, they worship the sun, but it's also very stratified. Classic YA dystopian stuff. Um, there's a hierarchy. There's like a group of the powerful people who are rich, can do everything they want, and then there's a lower class that is suffering that does not have enough to meet ends meet, that doesn't have food most of the time. And our main character is in the lower class. And then at the same time that all of this is going on, there's kind of like this, not a fairy tale, but like kind of a scary story that people say about like the night. And the night is this secret group that terrorizes the country. <laughs> So like you don't want to go out at night because you don't want to be stolen by the night. You get it? So that was a really messy synopsis. It's the best that I can do under the circumstances. It's kind of a book that you just need to feel out as you go. However, I actually ended up really liking this. Um, it's kind of like classic YA, revolutionary main character, special girl stuff, you know? Also like a love triangle, very cliche, but I actually really enjoyed it. My favorite part about this book, though, is that I don't know if this in is intentional either. I swear to God, though, that this book is just, like, a metaphor for, like, communism. <laughs> like, the critiques of class are so fucking communist, you cannot convince me otherwise. 100%. In my heart. Like, not in my head. I don't think that this author was actually trying to make, like, a communist novel, but I believe it. <laughs> So yeah, I enjoyed this one a lot more than I thought I would, and I give it four stars. Next, I picked up A Long Petal of the Sea by Isabel Allende. This is another book that I feel like is impossible to describe because it just encompasses so much. From like the back of the book, it's talking about the Spanish Civil War, and that is where the story starts. You meet the main characters there, and eventually they flee Spain and they come to Chile. Um, which is kind of a classic for Allende, like she, she's always talking about Chile. But from there, it just feels like, you know, like you chose this book, you went into it thinking you're reading a book about the Spanish Civil War. But right from the beginning, like the Civil War is ending and they're fleeing somewhere else. And then you get Chile and you think it's about how Chile accepted like Spanish refugees and what happened with the politics there during that. But then it goes all the way to like the Chilean coup and afterwards and there's just so much that it honestly 
really ruined the experience for me. It just felt like Allende was trying to cram too much into one novel and maybe if it had been like marketed or if the synopsis on the back had said it was about like Chilean history from the Spanish Civil War and beyond then I would have gone in there expecting it but considering that I was expecting something about the Spanish Civil War and then I got so much other history that I wasn't expecting it kind of just ruined it for me. I'm realizing also that I don't think Allende's writing is for me. I just can't get on with her characters. I never really feel like the fully fleshed out people. Um, I feel like a lot of her portrayal of certain people was just kind of like stereotyped and in particular in this book though, what really fucking killed me was there would be, I don't know how to describe this, there would be a situation where two characters were together and it seemed like they may never see each other again. And then the next line she'd write something about how, and then many years ago, like, they reminisced about this, or then, and she never told anyone else for the rest of her life about this. But then it felt like it was honestly ruining the plot in some areas. Like, those characters did end up coming back. She didn't need to tell us right then when it seemed like they may never come back that, oh no, they actually will be coming back later, just like, stay tuned. It was weird. It was clumsy. And also my explanation of that was very clumsy. So, who am I to say anything? But... Yeah, I think I'm still interested in House and the Spirits by her, just because I know that's her most popular novel, but other than that... Allende is not for me. I gave it one star. And then the last book I read this month was Annihilation by Jeff Vandermeer. I picked this book up because I saw the movie and then the book was completely different from the movie in every single way. So in this book you're essentially following a biologist who goes into Area X. Area X is this part of the United States that's just been like completely transformed. Um, there's crazy shit going down into there and they've sent 12 different scientific expeditions and every single time the people who go in there to try to study area x and figure out what's going on die so the main character the biologist volunteers to go into area x for this expedition and it follows her experiences within it i loved this book this book wastes no fucking time it gets into things right away and it's kind of like a thriller in the aspect that you're always on the edge of the seat trying to figure out what the hell is going on what the hell is area x and what the hell is all this fucking shit that she's seeing i really 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 loved this book i also gave this book five stars I'm so excited to continue with the rest of the series and I highly, highly recommend. So yeah, there you go. Those are all the books that I read in the month of January. I don't think I did such a good job, to be honest. I only, <laughs> like, I didn't love all of these books. Um, I'm hoping next month will be better though. So yeah, thank you for watching and goodbye.